If what you're doing has you feeling good, yeah. don't worry about what anybody else on the planet says. Like right. their opinion do doesn't matter. The, the, the way, the way <clears throat> the subconscious mind works is that even if people hear the wrong thing over and over and over again, you'll believe it yeah. even if it makes no sense. It's not the calories that affect weight gain or weight loss, it's the endocrine system. So the caloric model doesn't account for uh, the effect on insulin, the effect of lectin, zincretin effect. Um, it doesn't account for the thermic effect of food, inflammation, ketogenesis, uh, and many other things. Howdy, everybody, and welcome to episode 222 of the Superset Your Life.com podcast, your weekly workout motivation to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym. We got a double header today, so you're going to hear from Richard Anthony Smith again and from Mary Roberts, aka Keto Mary. The topic is counting calories today, why this is actually an absolutely horrible idea. If you are trying to lose weight and keep it off, we're going to get into why. We we all discuss the scientific errors of this flawed, outdated system, as well as a wiser approach to lose weight sustainably. This is part one of a two-part series. Next Friday, episode 224, you're going to hear from another highly experienced and respected coach where we discuss the same topic. It's taken me a long time to wrap my brain around all this, and so I feel like as many different ways as we can discuss and rediscuss it, the better that we will all understand it together. Um, this is not what most Instagram influencers, supplement salesmen, or mainstream media wants you to believe. The simple fact that a calorie is not a calorie was news to me a year ago. Um, since then, I have found this to be oh so true in my own personal life, the anecdotal evidence of our clients. And since then, I've been pulling up every single study, every single meta-analysis, every single quality research paper that I can get my hands on to understand why calories are a flawed system today, even though so many mainstream professionals still continue to use it. The truth always comes out, and I believe that more scientists, nutritionists, and doctors will continue to see the light and will continue to move forward from a construct that serves no place in human biology today. Coach Mark and I started Carnivore Coaches Corner um, almost a year ago. We've been publishing weekly on that channel ever since. Haven't missed a week yet and don't plan on any time soon. Um, we've been recruiting the very best doctors and nutritionists from all parts of the world. to teach. That's how far you have to go to find these people uh, to teach us, our listeners, and our clients the truth about what a proper human diet is and what that means for how we should eat, train, and track our progress in this realistic world that we live, that we live in today. So uh, two of our recent guests on that channel were actually Richard Anthony Smith and Keto Mary. So that'll be on sessions 42 and 41 of that show because we like to schedule that show out a bit whenever I, <laughs> whenever I don't have time to record. It's really nice to take a week off if needed. And so we try to be like three or four weeks out ahead on that show. Um, but yeah, if you are subscribed to Carnivore Coaches Corner, um, we talked about everything from eating disorders to alternatives to tracking calories. Um, fighting back nasty social media comments from people that have been harassing some of my clients, some of our clients who are simply sharing the results of how a primal way of eating has changed their life for the better. Make sure you subscribe there on Carnivore Coach's Corner. You'll catch everything that we talk about, um, everything about Richard's backstory, Keto Mary's backstory, and who these uh, two truly fine people really are. Um, this podcast, this episode, is a short excerpt from another talk that uh, Richard and I did on the science of calories and how to approach weight loss even more wisely. Super grateful for his time to help me explain this just one more time a little bit differently. Um, after that, I will turn things over to Keto Mary, where she and I talked about basically the same thing on her show and, and a bit more about how to practically um, get started with the ketogenic way of eating, how to get started with the primal way of eating, even if you don't embrace every single aspect of a ketogenic diet or a, or, or a primal way of eating. There's a lot that you can learn. And if you're on a standard American diet, then one step in the right direction is better than no steps at all. So you can listen to my uh, entire interview on, on, our, on, on the podcast, Food Freedom with Keto Mary, and that was published yesterday. So let's waste no more time. I'm going to take us to England right now, where we will be with Richard Anthony Smith. Before we do, every podcast on this channel definitely starts with the Word of God. So uh, Romans 12.21 says, Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is helpful. 
everything is permissible for me, but I will not be under the control of anything. Excuse me. But I will not be brought under the control of anything. And then Proverbs 15, 22, plans fail where there is no counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. It's one of my favorites. So there are three pieces of wisdom right there that I want you to keep in mind as you listen to what you're about to hear. Um, now you get to hear from two of my favorite counselors that I believe from the bottom of my heart that God has put in my life for a reason. Uh, Richard and Mary. First up, here's Richard. All right, Richard. Thank you so very much for helping me shed some more light on this topic because why we don't track calories is probably like the number one question that I get in my DM box uh, in our consultations, even for, uh, from, our, from our new clients. Uh, why do you not track calories? So Richard, why is, um, why is calorie counting not something that you're a fan of or that you ever really use with your clients? Look, so a calorie doesn't really exist in the context that we believe it to. Um, you know, as you've stated numerous amount of times, a calorie is a measurement of heat. Um, and it is, you know, the way that we measure a calorie is we put a, a food into something called a bomb calorimeter and we incinerate it. Well, we don't incinerate our food, we metabolize. And what is measured there are the photons that it produces and the heat that it generates. Uh, the human body doesn't work that way. Um, and if it did, um, you know, we could maybe have a, a unit of measurement, but the fact is all foods impact uh, our endocrine system in a different way. So they all have different, a, a calorie is not a calorie. Uh, and by that, what I mean is it's not the calories that affect weight gain or weight loss, it's the endocrine system. So the caloric model doesn't account for uh, the effect on insulin, the effect of lectin, zincretin effect, um, it doesn't account for the thermic effect of food, inflammation, ketogenesis, uh, and many other things. And really quickly, we'll just go yeah, into you listed five good ones right there. Perfect. Yeah, and look, and they're all they're all important. But you know, the, the biggest factor here is the effect of insulin. And what people don't understand is when insulin is elevated, is that it upregulates enzymes. Um, which break the bonds on the glycerol backbone and send fatty acids into the fat cell and they block hormone sensitive lipase, which is the enzyme we need to utilize that fat for fuel. When insulin is elevated, it's biologically impossible to burn fat. We need insulin to come back down in order to burn fat. So the, it, the, the, the ingestion of carbohydrates are going to elicit this insulin response and lead to fat storage. Um, so it isn't, it isn't, it can't be the calories and the, the foods that we consume have a different impact in regards to the fat storage effect. For example, you know, if we are to eat a bowl of muesli that contained 500 calories or bacon and eggs that contained 500 calories, because of the insulin effect from the muesli and something called lectins, so lectins are carbohydrate binding proteins which bind to insulin receptors and they tell the body to store five times more fat than insulin does itself. To put that into perspective, if I eat a bowl of muesli that contained 500 calories, bacon and eggs that contained 500 calories, that bowl of muesli is going to store five times more body fat than that bacon yeah. and eggs. It cannot that, be that the calories. food is communicating with your body. That, 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 that food is sending so many metabolic and hormonal signals that change everything. And it makes it so that your body isn't a closed controlled system like a bomb calorimeter is or like a steam wow. engine. The calories are invented for steam engines, not for humans to use for nutrition. I don't, we, we started using for nutrition. That never made any sense to begin with. Um, our, our obesity rate has gotten worse ever since then. It hasn't gotten better. Here in the United, here in the United in the United States, it's probably the same for you guys in the UK. But for us, we have, we have, we have, we, we lose weight just about faster than anybody else on the planet. And yet we gain that weight back faster and we still have one of the highest obesity rates. Tracking calories does not work. No, I dropped tracking calories. I did track calories when I began my journey. And what I found was that the transition from a, a high carbohydrate lifestyle into a ketogenic and then carnivore now means that I consume, uh, I, I daily, I consume around 6,000, between four to 6,000 calorie equivalent a day. I don't track anymore, but I've looked into it on a number of occasions just for the response to questions that I get. 6,000 calories and I'm single figure body fat. Um, and I don't, it's not, I, I, eat, I don't eat 6,000 every day, but as an average, it's within that window of four to 6,000. 
When I consumed 2,700 on, on a carbohydrate diet, I became clinically obese, type 2 diabetic, and suffered with a myriad of, of uh, health illnesses. It cannot be the calories. You know, energy needs to be accounted for, but you can't account for it in, in a calorie. Um, neat, you know, these the, the, the things that we do without thinking. Like, I, I'm sitting here tapping my leg as I'm talking to you. You can't yeah. account for, for that energy. <laughs> so I'm doing you, the same thing. You know? <laughs> It, you can't go by your Garmin or, you know, your smartwatch just on a run. And it, I know people who hit the gym, their watch tells them they've burned 600 calories and then they go and smash a, a Burger King or a Domino's or a McDonald's and undo all that hard work. It's the effect on insulin. It's an insulin response that governs whether we gain or lose weight. If you want to lose weight quickly, you need to improve your insulin sensitivity. Uh, and that comes with reducing carbohydrates. All carbohydrates are sugar. So we need to remove the sugar, the carbohydrates. This is the quickest way for us to lose weight, improve metabolic health, uh, and thrive. This is a thriving lifestyle. I haven't tracked for quite some time. I eat intuitively. I eat when I'm hungry. If I'm not hungry, I don't eat. Uh, my meals are typically protein and fat, as nature intended. Everything comes in nature, comes with protein and fat. Nature provides us with this perfectly packaged present that contains every vitamin and mineral that we need not just to survive but thrive an egg for example is yep. almost equal numbers of protein and fat beef beef steak you know chicken breast with the skin on nature gives us this perfectly packaged present all we need to do is oh, but what do we do as a society and then we everybody take... f, and then everybody f's it up by the time it gets to it gets to the store because what do you have exactly. you have low fat this you have carb free that <laughs> so that you, yeah. you, you know it uh, if, if you if you stick to what's in nature and you stick to using common sense, who's at the top of the food chain? Lions are at the top of the food chain. It makes the most. I believe that I, I believe that humans are right up there with them. Right to eat to eat like a lion, we have very similar digestive systems. We break down fat better than any other animal on the planet. We can't digest fiber. Neither can lions. <laughs> yeah, spot on. I agree. Uh, may, may may I may I run by you what my understanding is of. Um, of how, of, how, of of why we don't track calories because here again like people look at people look at you like you're like like you're crazy when you when you when you say when you say that a calorie is not a calorie because it goes against everything that's taught in school it goes against everything that's taught to get your fancy to, to get to get your fancy uh, uh uh personal trainer certification right so um this this has taken a year for me to wrap my to, to wrap my brain around this sorry one sec let me get my let me, get, let me get my notes summed up. So the, yeah, my, my sources here are Bart K, Stephen Thomas, you, um, and then Stephen with ans with Ancestral Perspective. We're going to have him on our podcast next week and talk about the same topic because I just don't think we, we can talk about it enough. Like I said, it took me a year for me to wrap my brain around this concept, but humans gain energy through a chemical process. We can't absorb heat units because we're not a steam engine. Um, calories are a measurement of a specific form of energy, which is heat. So mathematically, all that means is that that's a construct that enables you to convert from one type of energy for another. So a construct is an idea or a theory containing various conceptual elements, typically one considered to be subjective and not based on empirical evidence. This requires machinery for which this energy can be converted from one form to another. Here again, it was invented in the 1800s for, uh, to compare types of fuel between steam engines. And so for accurate measurements, you really have to have a bomb calorimeter in a complete, clo uh, completely closed and controlled environment. Never had anything to do with nutrition in the first place. Um, human beings aren't steam engines, and so it can't work. Like you're not even comparing apples to apples. Um, ca uh, restricting calories, in, in my experience, just what I've seen that do and what it's done for me personally is it's just a way to trick yourself into eating less. Um, that magic number doesn't necessarily mean anything. I just did, I just did my math right now, bro, um, on how many calories I'm eating and I'm eating, uh, so I'm on 200 cause, cause I don't even know. Right. So I just did the math right now. So 225 grams of protein and 350 grams of fat. And I'm losing weight on this fast. I've gone from 215 to 212 the last few days on this, um, and my ma and so that's what my macros are. Um, if we're doing four calories per gram of protein and nine cal nine calories per gram of fat, that's 225 times four, 350 times nine. That adds that adds up to over 4,000 calories that I'm eating right now. 
And like nobody would tell you that you can lose weight on 4,000 calories unless you're like obese, but certainly not if you're an advanced athlete like me that's on a contest prep, right? Yeah, spot on. And that it is, that it is. You know, it's it's not the calories. Yes, if you were to eat more, then that slow down and you would eventually gain weight. But it's incredibly difficult to store uh, fat from eating fat. And even during a bulking phase when I competed professionally, you know, I, I would eat towards the upper end of, of 6,000. And I'd find it incredibly hard to gain weight. Even, you know, when I was gaining weight, I was still ripped and shredded. Yeah. Um, it's You try gaining weight by eating meat. It's tough, you know, mm -hmm. but the muscle building... You know, your body works as efficiently as it can and you build muscle as quickly, uh, you know, as, as it humanly possible when you remove all of those toxic foods, those anti-nutrients to prevent your body from, from being able to build that muscle. 4,000, you know, that's, as you say, if you told somebody in, you know, your local diabetic clinic or Weight Watchers clinic or whatever it was that you were eating 4,000, they would look at you stupid. And there you are, ripped and shredded. Right. You know, in, yeah. Proof's in the pudding. I mean, the, key, the proof's in the steak. <laughs> the proof's in the steak, absolutely. <laughs> Have you found it frustrating that most of the most most of your fellow athletes, not not the not those that you, that you train, but those that you uh, but those that you train with that um, that that do professional cycling, professional bodybuilding, the, all the all the all, all the sports that you've been able to do um, on the carnivore diet. Have you found it? Uh, have you found it frustrating that there's um, still a lot of conflict of beliefs, um, particularly on the, on this topic? And do you ever feel like you're, do you, do you ever feel like you're outnumbered by people that completely disagree with you? Completely. It's super frustrating. I've ripped apart the bodybuilding community and shown that you can be the best version of yourself. I'm not genetically gifted. Um, you know, I don't train harder than anybody else. I was utilizing a tool that nobody else was using uh, but they were too stuck in their ways to see it. And I put it down to, to carb addiction again. Um, but I moved away from the bodybuilding. You know, I, I did everything that I thought I could there. Um, and I wanted to try something new. So I gravitated into running and cycling. Um, I was invited by a local club, uh, amateur club. But, you know, I was working with some of the athletes in there. Um, and they invited me to start running and cycling. You know, basically, they laid the gauntlet down. If running, uh, if keto is so good carnival so good come and show us how it's done um so i did i started last last year uh within a few months i quickly became the third best athlete in the club um and now i believe to be number one my times my running times are the quickest in the club oh. yeah my, t my my running times are the quickest in the club um i've been out on uh, i haven't raced um some of the guys but we have been out on riding events where testosterone kicks in and we all race you know on segments on on strava so strava has these little segments and we race on those i've never been beaten not one person in the club has ever and, and i'm um you know i i, I i'm in the top 10 in the world on some of these segments, man. You know? <laughs> so it's there in black and white um yeah. but there's some of the people within within this community are well on board they live in the lifestyle but the better athletes are dead against it and it's uh it's it's really frustrating because they you know they they demonize what I do quite often um, just a couple of bad eggs as it were um, yeah. but you know it's the, the stupid thing is you know you and I were talking before we came on um, I've always just respected these people because you know they they were older than me um, so you know you oh, always look happy happy birthday by the way th thank uh, you yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you you are forty years old and just flat out do not look like it, man. I got the opposite problem. C you know, know. <laughs> everybody's yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody's been telling me that I look like I'm eighteen, and so I'm like, no, I'm thirty one. <laughs> yep, that's why. That's why I dyed the, the the mustache and the goatee so you could see it better too. <laughs> trying, trying to make myself trying to make myself look older, but man, no, I I respect you, dude. For, forty years old, way to go. Oh, thank you, man. It's yeah, I'm forty. I was uh, forty yesterday. Um, and the interesting thing, and I come back to what we were just talking about. I competed. I went away to compete in a race uh, at Chepstow, Chepstow Race Course, which is a horse racing track, but they had a running event there. 10K race. There was 381 competitors in my race. I came fourth on chip time, uh, fifth across the line. And within my age category, the 35 to 39, I came third. Now, the interesting thing was if the race took place two days later, I would have won my age category. Now, remember, I'm new to this. It's only 
you know, lot in 23, I began running. And now at an amateur level, you know, I'm beating people who have been running for 15, 20 years. Um, you know, and that's, that, I th you know, that, that, I think that's incredible. Um, yeah, it's outstanding. So, but people just don't want to see it, you know, because what they will say is, oh, so-and-so who is on carbs is doing better. But that person's been running for 10 to 15 years. Put things into perspective. I shouldn't be anywhere near these people. Mm -hmm. Um and, and this is the case with some of the guys that, you know, that, that compete in the club. Uh, one of the guys is a British champion cyclist. Uh, and I've beaten him on, ev you know, every time that he's tried to race me on segments. Um, yet he'll put a dig in and demonize Keto and say how shit it is and all this. And, well, you know, how can you say I'm beating you? You know, um, <laughs> it's I did a duathlon, a British uh, championship qualified duathlon November the 5th. Uh, with one of the guys in the club that is keto, but he is 50 something. So one of the oldest guys in the club, a really good athlete. Um, he's been doing this for a long time. He's a solid seasoned iron man. So I didn't even expect to, to finish this race. Um, there was 400 competitors in this race. Uh, and the, the European champion was there, the British champion, the, uh, the world champion, previous champions were all this was a british uh, uh sorry a european championship qualifier so this wasn't a local event people flew from all over the world to qualify f for this european um championship so you're talking top athletes yeah. Yeah, some, yeah. some some of the world's best athletes and me so i didn't even expect to finish my goal my first goal was to finish my second goal was not to come last uh, and my third goal was to try to get as close to, to you know, to, to Mark as I could, who is keto, by the way. He is a keto athlete. Um, I came 93rd out of 400. And it's, that sounds a bit shit, but 93rd out of 400 of the world's best athletes, I think is pretty good to, uh, to a sport <laughs> yeah. that I'm new sure. to. I was only two or three minutes away from qualifying. So, I mean, t and, and I probably lost a minute on transition because I'm not used to transitions. And I finished about eight minutes ahead of Mark, who is a, a seasoned athlete. Um, you know, but I'm a lot more strict. I'm carnivore. Mark still indulges in, in, in little sweet treats. But it just goes to show that, you know, the stricter you are, the more you benefit. But I had no recognition from the club off the back of this. Um, not, you know, not one of them said, well done. You know, you've outperformed. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. But I've always respected them because they are, you know, these guys are older than me. Um, you know, you know, that thing, you, you know, you're always told to respect your elders. You just automatically respect people who are older than you. But the interesting thing was results came out the other day and I found out that all of these guys are younger than me. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've bit my lip, respected my elders and they're like eight to 10 years younger. And, and in yeah. fact, one of them's like in the mid twenties, I was convinced that at least two of them were, were at least three to five years older. And, you know, they, they, I think one was 31, the other one was like 32, the other one was in their 20s. I think and I genuinely thought by looking at them that, you know, they were older than me yeah. because they look older. And, and I put it down to this oxidative and electrophilic stress, this, this damage caused by excess carbohydrate consumption. It ages the body. And as we've explained yeah. in the previous podcast you know, if, if, if your listeners want to listen to that, that's, that's available. I'm sure that's a fantastic podcast that explains how this oxidative and electrophilic stress lowers lifespan, you know, and ketones improve it. And lowers your lifespan makes it easier to gain fat. It's just like, exactly. right. Everything. So I, I don't know what I have to do. I, I joined this. The reason that they asked me to come to the club was basically just to put me in my place, isn't it? You know, and show that they are better runners and cyclists than me. And now I'm beating them all. Um, and I'm still getting a boost. And it's like, what the fuck do you want me to do? Like, and, and you know, I, I don't mean to swear, but it's just really, I'm a Euro British European champion in a sport that, you know, I'm not genetically capable of doing i i don't build muscle easily and a complete 180 from that into running and cycling i'm not built to be a runner i'm not built to be a cyclist right. how is this person who is new to these sports beating me is the question they should be asking but they don't they keep looking for that one thing that brings them back to the carbohydrate and it comes back to this carbohydrate addiction sugar addiction they are drug addicts yeah. they're addicted to a drug and they cannot give up their sugar you could show them 99 studies 
which conclude, and we've got these studies, they're there, you know, and I will happily yeah. show you. Look at these studies, but it'll only take one person to tell them what they want to hear, and then bang, they're all over the carbohydrate. It's sugar addiction. They're drug addicts, they're sugar addicts, and they cannot um, resign to the fact that a life without sugar, you know, is, is a better lifestyle. It's this addiction. Right. It's a drug by, addiction. By uh, variety is not the spice of life. Vitality is. And if and if and if sugar improves your quality of life, uh, great. I don't see how that's possible personally. But if but if you believe that it is, and if you can show me that it is, hey, I'm not sold out to the keto diet. I'm not sold out to the carnivore diet. I'm sold out, out to what works and what makes common sense and what I see work in the lives of my clients. And it just all points to red meat, water, salt. Meat based, meat based diet the way that God designed it. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I completely agree. Look, if 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 it's working for you, fantastic. If a, yourself as a ketogenic carnivore athlete will always beat yourself as a carb athlete, one hundred percent. And there's no doubt in my mind. If you commit and allow, you gotta, give, you gotta give it process, time. Yeah, you gotta like, give it time. Oh, like Oh, I cut out carbs for a week and I feel like crap. Yeah, exactly. because you haven't given it time. This this takes a lot of time. There's there's usually some healing processes that need to happen in your gut because they say that when you go carnivore, you, you feel you feel like a new person. You do, like you are, because you're changing you're changing your brain chemistry. You have brain cells in your gut. Your your whole your whole gut goes through a healing process when you cut out all these anti-nutrients that Richard was just talking about. Yeah, I c completely agree. And it's, you know, these pathways and enzymes need, need up regulating and people do not commit long enough. But if it works for you, that's fine. But don't, don't come down on me when I start beating you, you know, at the event that you've been working on for, for, for 5, 10, 15 years. Um, and it will happen. You know, it's within the, the running and cycling or the duathlon space. I'm improving hand over fist. I'm never going to be a world leading athlete in it because I'm I'm not genetically predispositioned. Um, I don't think I want to push the extremity that would allow me in, in order to do so. But, you know, I, I am beating these people. And if you want to improve as an athlete, get on the train, you know, get on the train or, yep. or get left behind. And it's, it's, it is as simple as that. But do not put these other people down who are, conferring a huge benefit from removing that drug and those toxic compounds that you cannot give up. And that is what I find incredibly difficult. The amount of backlash that I get for trying to help people improve health and well-being. And I put a lot of it down to jealousy. I think it's, um, they don't like the fact that we are proving this lifestyle day after day, time after time. Yeah. But you know, and most and most of the people that are advocating that that are advocating high carb diets and and, and that and that are and that, and that are accusing us of ruining people's quality of life or ruining people's ho hormones or whatever, we just debunked all that. By the way, you can check out our YouTube channel, Skill Bells TV, um, session number forty three of um, of Carnivore Coaches Corner. We debunked every single one of those things. Hey everyone, Coach Taylor Milton here. Welcome to Skull Bells TV, the official YouTube channel of supersetyourlife.com where you're gonna discover a weekly upload of quick and easy to follow workout tutorials featuring Coach Colt, myself, or one of our athletes to keep your workouts fun, practical, and effective. Our family's latest keto carnivore recipes that fuel Colt's competitions and keep myself and our kiddos strong and healthy. Video uploads of the supersetyourlife.com podcast, now over a hundred episodes your weekly dose of entertainment, education, and inspiration to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym and much more. Last thing before we get into the video, we're asking a big favor from you. This has been working beautifully. So if you would please think of someone you care about that would benefit from this video, go ahead and smash that like button, click the share button and text this video to them. That would mean the world to us. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more exciting content from School Bells TV because our team has lots of meat and lots of muscle coming your way and I promise you won't wanna miss it. When you hit the subscribe button, you'll see a bell icon pop up. You wanna click that too so you're notified every time we release a new video. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world to us. Every like, share, and subscription helps our channel grow and supports our family's hard work. So thank you so much for doing your part too. That's all we ask. God bless you and please enjoy this video. Could we wrap this up with just a practical tip, right? Okay, uh, to lose weight, 
I don't recommend tracking calories. You don't recommend tracking calories. Um, if you are already fat adapt, I mean, you probably don't even need to track anything if you're if you're just going from a standard American diet and trying to get headed in the, and trying to start heading in the right direction, right? So, I think both both you and I would agree to eventually get your diet as close to being beef, bacon, butter, eggs. Um, and uh, whatever whatever other meats that your body is craving, whatever whatever meats that you enjoy, make that the foundation of your diet, right? Um, when we start tracking, the only time that I ever really find use for it is for bodybuilders, and so most of my clients are actually professional and amateur bodybuilders that are that have very specific body uh, composition goals, or they're not competing and they uh, and, and they're just after similar goals. Um, other than other than that, do you really do do much more besides just tracking macros here and there? No, look, I think if there's the piece of advice that I would give, and this is across the board, you know, so this is for anyone who is on a, a, a carb diet also, you know, carbs are not essential. Um, carbs contain lectins and toxic compounds and incredibly, you know, they have a, a big impact on insulin, but the grains particularly are high in lectins. So look, if there's any advice I can give, remove grains from your diet completely. Mm -hmm. uh, remove the vegetable oils, the seed oils that are high in the oxidized omega-6 linoleic acid. Um, prioritize protein because protein in nature comes with fat. Uh, yep. Eat real food. You know, eat until you are satisfied. Uh, eat when you're hungry. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Um, and if you are consuming carbohydrate from vegetables or any other form for that matter, build your plate up with, with protein. Physically, fill three quarters of your plate with animal protein and if you want to put vegetables on there make it one quarter and just remember that there's nothing of any nutritional value coming from that vegetable but if you want and, and we debunked that again you know in in that um in that uh, podcast that you just mentioned um so get in and watch that and you can find out why prioritize protein fill your plate with protein limit the amount of vegetables uh and i think it, it is as simple as that you know if you follow those three rules then you are going to be considerably fitter and healthier and you are going to live a, a much healthier lifestyle and you're going to reap all the rewards that come along with, with, with doing so. Amen to that. If what you're doing has you feeling good, yeah. don't worry about what anybody else on the planet says. Like right. their opinion do doesn't matter. The, the, the way, the, way <clears throat> the subconscious mind works is that even if people hear the wrong thing over and over and over again, you'll believe it even yep. if it makes no sense. Like with fiber, yep. what, what, yeah. what 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 is, what does fiber do? It clean it cleans it cleans out your gut, right? No, yeah. it doesn't. When when does that <laughs> when does when does that ever make sense? You're in a traffic jam. There's like a million cars there. All right, what's the Let's answer? Add more cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's gonna my my last fun question will be like after this. I have this one question, and then my last question will come back to the the fiber thing. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Cool. So if someone is not exercising and they're currently not eating well, they're not food sober, they have, you know, they've got to lose 50, a hundred pounds or so where should they begin if they want to get into shape? Yeah, that's totally why I just asked you that on Carnivore Coach's Corner too, because I wanted to see what your answer was to that. Um, but I, I think, I think we both, I think we both agree. Um, if, if, if you're, if, if your goal is to lose weight, um, don't start tracking macros right away. Don't try, you know, don't, don't try to follow a strict meal plan. You just need, okay. There's, yeah, there, there's, there's phases and, and you got to take this step by step, but like cutting out fiber, th th that's a transition. Um, changing your macros to now wait to, to keto macros. So now you're eating way more fat than you ever have before. Um, that that's, that's going to come with some consequences too. If you do that too fast. Um, yeah. if, if you cut out everything and then just go straight carnivore, I mean, yeah, you're going to have an electrolyte deficiency. And so it's going to take time for your body to adjust and go through these proper changes. Yeah. Um, I think that, I think that if, if just somebody listening is like, all right, what's the first thing I can do to, to make a step in the right direction to stop eating bread and eat more red, more, more red meat. If you do those two things, you're probably down five pounds in a week or two, less yeah. sugar cravings. Yeah. And drink just water and coffee. <laughs> yep. So, okay. So my last question, and this is for fun, because I'm sure that, um, you know, I have clients ask me this all the time. They, they, they always ask about like constipation and, or they, they're, they're carnivore or keto and they don't go as often as they used to. So how do you and your clients poop if none of you eat fiber? 
Oh yeah, well we all we all poop just fine, <laughs> at least at least after the first couple of weeks. So how do you how do you explain it to to, <laughs> to someone? Like, because I always say I tell people, well, you know what, newborn babies don't eat fiber, but they're pooping every day. You know, yeah, that's such a good point. I never I never thought of that one. That's a really good counter argument too. Yeah, <laughs> um, they're also born in ketosis. I'm just saying. <laughs> Another good point. Yeah, so I, I, I'm 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 just like Bart K. Um, one one and done in the morning without effort, without ease, and there's usually not a whole lot because my body's using everything it is. If you're right when when I, when I uh, before I was carnivore, my I would I would poop two or three times a day, and they were big and they were green. Like I'm sorry, like this is <laughs> yeah. you might want you might want you might want to was... you might wanna mark this podcast as explicit. <laughs> <laughs> But, but no, like these are the conversations that we need to have because I think like everybody experiences this. And I always tell my yeah. clients, I'm like, listen, if you're eating only real food and, and this is not the, you know, and also you're now eating, you know, the real food you're eating is amounting to less food than when you were like carb binging all the time. So yeah. because it's real food, your body's using more of the food that you're eating and because you're eating less than you would on a hyper palatable processed food diet you have less waste. So yeah. it's, you know, it's okay if you don't go three times a day or you don't even go every day. I know there's, I know it's a drainage pathway and some people get like really like up in arms if you don't go every single day, but yeah. I don't think that it's, I think if you, you know, had one or two yeah, days, you don't even have to go, go it's not day. that big a deal. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. That, oh, that yeah, question so, always. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I posted a video on TikTok of our uh, on our, our on our Conover Coaches Corner account of just like cooking burgers for our kids, and this and this and this vegan dude comments and accuses me of being a child abuser because I'm not feeding them fiber. Okay. I'm like, oh my word! And so okay. that's why we yeah that's why we re we recorded the fiber podcast. I just pulled up all my books that that talk about fiber and I emailed um, just five or six of our clients. I'm like, what happens when you do eat fiber? What happens whenever you do have something that has fiber in it? Every single person when they emailed and I have them all right here in front of me. They they they, they, all, they all said the same yeah. thing. They feel, they feel like garbage. They're 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 inflamed and it throws off their bowel movements. Like yeah, I I, I never I, I never really pass gas because I'm not eating a lot of yeah. vegetables, right? And then if, as soon as I eat a vegetable, I'm farting. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that is so true. That's hilarious because like when I was going, you know, 10 years ago when I was in the weight loss process, it just dawned on me one day that I didn't have, I wasn't as gassy as I used to be. <laughs> and, yeah. then, you know, and then when I did my carnivore experiment, like I don't think it ever happened once. I'm like, this is insane. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's interesting. Like I, the whole fiber, I don't understand the people that have this love affair with fiber. Um, oh, it's, oh, it's, it, it's the, it's, 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 it's all the mentality of it. Just like we were talking about before, I think it's, it's just, it's, it's free calories. It's free food. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can eat more of it. And it, it but it, again, okay, like, yeah, okay. Saying, okay like, so now your gut's going to be bigger, right? Like you feel yeah. physically full, but now mentally you're totally confused. Now yeah. you're bloated and two hours later, you're, you're hungry and you don't right. know why. We're not look, I think too, it's important to, when we work with clients that, you know, cause some people have volume addiction and mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they, 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 Oh, want to yeah. continue to eat till they have that like full kind of stuffed feeling that's not what we're looking for like you can, you get you away can from that use mentality. a bunch of filler yeah. and get that feeling but what we're looking for is satiation and we're going to get that from the nutrient dense you know animal foods not not a bowl of lettuce i mean and i'm not anti i like you know a couple times a year i like to have a cold crisp salad piled high with meat on it and, and all the you know the fixins but every time i do that I, my stomach is distended and I get gassy. It's like, okay, but I know ahead of you got, time. You got to like, plan okay, ahead. We're, we're not working out later in the day after yeah, that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I know what I'm going to go to cheesecake factory and have the, the Cobb <laughs> salad, but the car ride home, I'm going to have, you know, my, my gut is going to be a little unhappy with me, but I like the taste of it. So I'm willing to suffer that temporary like consequence, but um, yeah. yeah, the fiber topic is so controversial and I just wish people would like, use their critical thinking skills and and some common sense when thinking about it like it literally yeah. bolts up your stool you, you, you can't like it, for for sure yeah and, and it, it, it is controversial so, sorry again but like you, you you can't you can't find any you, you can't you can't find any good information on it on youtube it's all it's all shadow banned and so yeah. like when you yeah when, when, when you when you look at doctors that, that know what they're talking about and they start talking about fiber they'll say things like okay here's, here's my website 
can't talk about this subject is controversial next <laughs> yeah have, have you ever read the book um the Fi fiber menace <laughs> i just bought it it's on its way to my house yeah <laughs> okay good i will tell you like, I, this guy I bought it because of that dude on on tiktok have said you that. his website <laughs> his website is gutsense.org he, I love his humor, like when he's explaining like why we don't, need, he's like, whose idea was it to, you know, stuff our colon full of, you know, things we can't digest. Like, yeah. he's just really like straightforward. I, I love that book. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I really enjoyed our chat. Um, for you listeners, you can find him on Instagram at Holt Milton and uh, his website is supersetyourlife.com. Thanks so much for being on with me today. Pleasure was, pleasure was all mine and an honor as always. Thank you so very much. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. If you found this helpful, please pay it forward by sharing with a friend. One more thing before we sign off. If you are not subscribed to our nutrition podcast, Carnivore Coaches Corner, you really are missing out. You are definitely missing out because the next two sessions that you hear on that channel are going to be from Keto Mary herself and from Richard Anthony Smith himself. So super excited for you to listen to those ones. Uh, two, 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 of, two of my favorite podcasts I have ever recorded, actually, to be completely honest. They're pretty life-changing. So um, anyway, uh, what, what we typically do on that show is uh, Coach Mark and I collaborate weekly, diving in uh, deep into meat-based nutrition and advanced hypertrophy training, featuring top coaches and nutritionists from a uh, from across the globe. If you are a fan of the low carb lifestyle or just getting into it, just search Carnivore Coaches Corner on the same platform that you are listening to now. Before we sign off, here's some words from one of our newer clients reporting on how her first couple weeks have been um, on her workout plans. So this is Dominique Young. She has a YouTube ministry called Faith Family Worldwide. Look them up if you haven't heard about them and all that uh, she and her husband Stephen do. I've been a part of Faith Family Worldwide for close to a year now. Um, and so of many of our other clients, we love listening to Dominique because she brings in so much energy and passion into the into the Bible. She just preaches it word for word. She keeps it super simple. Um, I have a huge list of pastors that I like listening to to like take a deeper dive and to um, you know and, and and to really learn and understand exactly what the text is saying. Um, I, I would, she, she's uh, definitely in that list for me as well. But she's one of those people that you can listen to and she doesn't put you to sleep when you talk to her. <laughs> I'm trying to say that politely. Uh, anyway, just super high energy, um, a lot of passion for the word and something that I, that I can listen to while I'm working out and something that our clients have been listening to while they work out. And so um, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a fun little group. But anyway, uh, we are going through the book of Leviticus right now, which I thought was brilliant because this is kind of the year, right, where a lot of people that have, uh, a lot of us that have started just from uh, from page one to page like 2000 <laughs> or wherever your Bible ends up um, and you've made it through Genesis, you've made it through Exodus. I feel like a lot of people quit in Leviticus. Leviticus is the only book that talks about uh, God's holiness and that really teaches uh, what, what what it means that God is holy. And so it's a really important book and the Bible is totally incomplete without it. If you've never read Leviticus, then you should look up Faith Family Worldwide. Hop on with us there. Um, she also, Dominique also helped me get our Ezekiel study off the ground. So that is Wednesday nights at six o'clock MST that is online i am leading that one um we are, again we are studying the book of ezekiel so if you've ever wanted to study that prophecy and never got around to it um, or if you've tried to read it and don't understand it uh welcome to the club <laughs> i certainly don't have all the answers but it's certainly my favorite book that i've ever read out of the bible and so uh, i do have some answers <laughs> and god always rewards a diligent student um so totally free of course email admin at supersetyourlife.com for details on that we would love to have you here is dominique young colt so colt is often on the replay he's also uh leading a hope group through the book of ezekiel but i want to shout him out because he's been helping me on my health journey he is a, a personal trainer and he has been helping me on my health journey of learning what to do in the gym because I'm like, I would go to the gym and I would stay on the treadmill because I'm like, that's all I know. That's all I know. Um, so shout outs to Colt. Shout outs to all the great work that he's doing with his athletes um, that he works with. Um, and he's just been awesome. Thanks again one more time, everybody. We'll catch you on Monday, episode 223, as always, where we're going to get you pumped up for next week. Spoiler alert, it's actually Carly Kovacic by popular request. And so she and I had a great time talk we just recorded that one yesterday 
Monday. We'll get that published for Monday. Uh, we talked all about running. Uh, we talked all we talked all about the Bible, all kinds of good stuff. So I'm gonna leave you with our battle cry, supersetyourlife.com. It is first Corinthians six, nineteen through twenty. Do you not know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. God bless. Catch you next week. Oh, 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 oh,